Welcome. Uh, in the last couple of exercises, you were asked to create uh, exception handling. The idea of the exception handling was to keep our code clean and provide a level of exception handling that would also take care of uh, whether or not the user had typed a numeric value where one is required. That meant we were going to change the keyboard reader code. And in our keyboard reader code, if I scoot through it a little bit, we can see at the top uh, right there from 12 all the way down to uh, 36, we have the code that was in there prior to our editing. So that was, uh, we didn't do anything there. Uh, however, down further, uh, from line 38 to the end, we're adding a overload for the get prompted int float and doubles. Each one of those contains a second uh, string that will act as our error message. He places in the try block uh, a return of the, uh, the expression integer parse int uh, and then the get prompted string. Now, the issue is here. If the expression produces an exception, namely, uh, you, you passed uh, uh, input that wasn't a numeric value, such as x, y, and z. Um, I can't parse that, or the expression can't, actually. And uh, therefore, an exception will be thrown. So we never return anything. Rather, we pass into the catch block. Now, the catch block will simply print the error message. The interesting thing about the for loop usage that he has here, in its form that we see on line 39, it's actually an internal loop. We're not providing any condition uh, that would require this loop to stop. So in that try block, should the uh, expression on line 41 work, and we did pass in a number, uh, then we'll commence to return it. And that takes us out of a method entirely. So therefore, we've broken out of the for loop. He does exactly the same thing for all of the other numeric types. And we can see, therefore, the, uh, for our float and double. Uh, there's no difference in the handling. Now, we can look at payroll. And in payroll, we can see how he's actually using this new, uh, this new addition. In payroll, he's going to get the first and the last names. Nothing special there. Uh, where he's going to get his int uh, on line 27, notice that he's using the overloaded method uh, and he's uh, passing the prompt for us to get enter the department, but he's also passing the error message that he would like to be displayed if a problem occurs. Then, if we remember the code for get prompted in, if there is a problem with uh, the values that we've uh, input, it will keep going and asking us for a new value uh, until we get it right. His do does pretty much the same thing as it had done before, with the exception that he is using now the two or the overload with two string arguments for the same effect that we had just talked about. He repeats that a little further down when we're uh, when we need to acquire the hours for a uh, employee uh, those are also numeric values so we want to be able to check them and make sure you didn't put in something that was uh, some X Y and Z or some other letter combination or special characters right now 
The changes here were really not that big, but they were meaningful. Now, your approach to how you may have overridden these may have been slightly different, uh, or it may have been identical. We're getting to a point now where uh, solutions to problems can take uh, many different uh, forms. Uh, if you didn't do it this way, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means you found another way to do it. The outcome is what we're looking for. All right. He went on and asked us to perform yet another part, and he called it the challenge. And I can see that I have my solutions for that challenge. In the challenge, we created a int validator as an interface. The, uh, that way, uh, in, with this interface, uh, we'll create some uh, concrete class to handle the validation. And we can use a number of different flavors for that, uh, for that by letting the classes themselves uh, implement this interface. One such class is our department validator. It implements the int validator. It overrides, notice the annotation there as we had before, uh, the accept method, and it's passing in the number for the department that we've entered. And then it's going to che check it for range. So now I'm not only going to check it to make sure that you handed in something that was uh, a legal number, but not a, not an uh, alpha character, but now I'm also going to check it against a range. It's got to be greater than zero and less than or equal to five. Uh, now, our code can use this, and we do that in our payroll. In the payroll, what he's doing is using his keyboard reader, and he's entered a third argument. Now, when he gets his prompt for an int on line 27, notice on line 29, whoops, on line 29, he's creating a new department validator. Well, the new department validator has our overloaded method except. So now we need to know how is that going to be used. Well, it's obviously being used in the keyboard reader. So let me go to the keyboard reader. In our keyboard reader, I can see that it will take our new method, and I can see it right here with the get prompted int on line 39, and that goes right down to line 51. Uh, on line 41 of that uh, block of code, he's getting a int validator. Now let's remember implicit casting. What he created was an instance of a department validator. But now he's accepting it as the uh, interface, int validator. Uh, that way he might be able to set up a whole different bunch of validators uh, for department or for anything else that might take an int as a value and pass it into this uh, get prompted int without worrying about what data type it actually is. Then he enters his for loop and does pretty much the same as he had done before. The only thing he wants to know that's in addition is on line 45. In there, he wants to make sure that the value you passed is in range. And if that's the case, he will simply return the number. If it's not, he's going to print the error message. The other thing that he's checking for here is to make sure that the value can, in fact, be converted into a number. And that's why we have the try and the catch still. That's allowing us uh, to present, then, uh, two possible errors. Uh, and to be uh, and to be much more complete about it, uh, 
And notice that we're also placing this information centrally. Uh, it's not really affecting very much the flow of logic that we see in the payroll program. The payroll program is much easier to read uh, simply because it has no tries or catches in it, for one, uh, and all of the error code has been generally removed and reduced to just simply method calls. Okay. Now that takes us through this exercise. The next thing you'll be working with is inheritance and working with uh, working with exceptions themselves, uh, creating your own exceptions, for example. So uh, have fun. <laughs>